Welcome to Meta Storytime. I'm Elizabeth Eve King. Today, we are so pleased to have Andrea Goyen reading Weekend Treasures by Melody Friedenthal, originally published in Eldritch Science in June of 2021, reprinted in Metastellar in August 2021. Welcome, Andrea. Thank you, Elizabeth. Weekend Treasures by Melody Friedenthal. Weekends, you'll find me at the Treasures and Trash Flea Market down on Old Grafton Road. All the regulars know me there. I've been a regular myself for nearly 30 years. The wife and I arrive early on Saturday so we can be all set up and ready for the first treasure hunters by 6.30 a.m. The spots aren't reserved, but Thelma and I always take out some territory at the far end of Isle G. Murray thinks we're crazy because we're so far from the porta potties and the fast food franchises, but it suits us. No, there's nobody to our left and some woods behind, so we get a little peace and quiet and some shade too. And it's a corner that's easily overlooked by the revenuers. We set up three tables every week. One displays my collection of old glass milk bottles, each one adorned with a dairy logo. I've got dairies from all over the state and half a dozen from even further afield. I usually sell one or two a day. It's okay, though. I'm in no hurry. Each one's got a story, and if they don't sell, well, I still have my story, don't I? The second table is packed with Thelma's quilts. We do a nice business on them. They look real nice and colorful sitting there and the tourists can't resist. Don't tell them that the quilts are handcrafted by my pretty wife. Get some. Thelma just smiles from behind the rickety table and continues piecing fabric. The last table just has junk. Once we get set up, I leave Thelma in charge and make my first perambulation around the dusty, windy pathways of them to see what I can see. You really can find treasures this way, although half the time when I get back, Thelma just sighs and points to our junk table. I protest, trying to tell her what gadget I found or how useful this whatchamacallit will be when we get it cleaned up a bit. More often than not, she won't be swayed and the thingy goes on to the third table. Sometimes I sneak it off again when she ain't looking. When I'm done hunting, it's Thelma's turn. I sit and greet the bargain hunters, and she goes out ostensibly to get us coffee. But she does some hunting of her own. When I guess it to look at her all white-haired and rosy-cheeked. My wife has the hunting instincts of a hungry tigress, and that's no lie. Besides the coffee, she usually comes back with some free plastic currency or maybe old-format DVDs you can't find anywhere anymore. But the best thing Thelma returns with, a reliable treasure, is gossip. I don't know how she does it, but every week she comes back with some tidbit that makes my jaw drop. Like how Harry was marrying again and how his current two wives and their seven kids were all excited. Or that I ought to take a look at that bald newcomer in aisle C because she thought he might be IRS. Or how Martine, who sells old science fiction books just a few spots down from us on ILG, was having an affair with both of the Smith brothers, her own competitors down on aisle M. I guess people just feel they can confide in my Thelma. She comes back with the most amazing stories. I hear all about it while we sit side by side in our folding chairs, drinking our coffee and eating some raspberry danish we've brought from home. One sunny Sunday afternoon, we were sitting and eating our ice cream in the shade of the maples that grew in the undeveloped plot behind our tables. This was slow, but it was pleasant watching the silly tourists go by. A woman at my side and no need to do anything but enjoy the breeze and gossip. I told Thelma I needed to see a man about a horse, winked, and strolled into the, into the woods. Fifty feet in, the noise from the hawkers and visitors was just about swallowed up by the trees. I could hear just a murmur, but I couldn't see a blessed thing. It's much nicer peeing here than walking the whole way back to the entrance to Treasures and Trash where the porta potties are. They're clean enough in the morning, but by late afternoon, with the sun beating down, the woods smelled a whole lot better. 
I finished my business and was about to return to my beloved when a noise distracted me. It was a worry, followed by a crystal bell ting at the end, and it seemed to come from off to my left. Strange, I thought. The land was country-owned and was left natural as a buffer between the commercial district in the northeast and the state highway off of that away. When I was a boy, teenagers scared the younger kids with stories about how these woods were inhabited by zombies, gremlins, and the like. But all I ever saw were some squirrels and a moose I named Chester. I stepped carefully over a tiny stream and pushed the branches of a young spruce out of the way. Then I saw it. It weren't no squirrel, not Chester neither. It was about five feet tall at the shoulder, and I call it a shoulder for want of a better word hairy along its grayish blue bulbous middle. There was a yellow lump on top of that tubby middle and four yellow legs in brown boots under it. The four blue hands, well, manipulating extremities, radiating out from the middle were all busy. One was rubbing some fallen leaves against itself, two were holding some kind of keyboard, and the fourth looked to be typing on it. There was a strong smell, but it wasn't as bad as the porta potties. In fact, it smelled a bit like cinnamon aftershave. I think the critters had been seeing a man about a horse, too, or maybe about a hexapetal herbivore. A gentleman should excuse himself on occasions like this, so I mumbled my apologies and turned to go. I stopped in my tracks when the colorful creature opened one of its mouths and said, Would you happen to have a three-inch purple doohickey? I was pretty shook up. I didn't know what doohickey was and wondered if Thelma did. That woman knew everything. Even if I didn't know whether or not I had one, the critter deserved an answer. Not sure. What's a doohickey? It's a special kind of thingamabob which morphs into a prion gizmo when under gravitational stress. Huh. Sorts of doodads. Maybe we can do business. Want to take a look. That would be a fine thing. Gratitude goes out to you. My collaborator of the first rank will join us. I took this to mean that the critter had a partner or colleague. Well, the more the merrier, I say. It said something into the machine it was holding, and all of a sudden, the undergrowth, some ten feet behind it, was disturbed. The branches swaying to and fro. Another one of the creatures came out from behind a wild blueberry bush. It was a bit larger than the first guy, and its coloration was reversed. It looked a bit like a giant blue-footed booby and was carrying a purple thingamajig in one of its yellow manipulators, turning it over and over. This critter was saying something that even to my human ears sounded rather heated. I'm guessing it was the alien version of a certain four-letter word, but that's just me. My name is Thorvald, I said. Pleased to meet you both, I added, for politeness sake. The second critter stretched out that grayish-blue lump of his momentarily and then said, Mine is Herkring. The collaborator of the second rank calls himself Mercadot, this solar cycle. Would you happen to have a purple doohickey about three inches long? I've already asked him, Mercadot sighed. How about a thin gummy? We need a transparent thin gummy with retractable whatsises and a thermal gimcracky of large but variable dimensions. I have all sorts of things on my third table, and you gentlemen are welcome to come take a look. If I don't have it, I'll bet you someone at the market does. I led them over the stream and through the woods to the flea market, only to discover all our neighbors had closed shop for the day and Thuma beginning to pack up. Took you so long, old man, she sounded aggrieved. I was having a nice conversation with these two this is Herkring, and his collaborator is Mercadot. They need a three-inch purple doohickey, which morphs into a prion gizmo and a transparent thing gummy. Either of those things among the junk uh, or treasures on the third table? Thelma's eyes widened in what I'm guessing was astonishment at first sight of our potential customers. But Thelma's all right. She doesn't have a prejudice bone in her body. See, what does a doohickey do? Maybe we've got something that will do the same job. 
He looked at Thelma with pride. Good question. Why haven't I asked that? She got right down to business. Her cring said, it wraps around a sonic amulet and keeps the glitches out. Is that a doohickey in your um, hand? She asked. Yes, but it broke, it broke when our vehicle and your planet tried to inhabit the same section of space-time. Now its molecules are hypertrated into rigidity. We need it to be flexible. Thelma pursed her lips and stood a while in thought. And while in oofish thought she stood, I offered Mercadot of her king the last of our raspberry Danish, and they chatted politely while the little wheels turned inside my beloved's head. I have just the thing, she exclaimed, picking up a small plastic egg from our third table, the one we reserve for junk of the finest kind. Harry calls it all trash because of the name of the market, but I prefer the eternal mystery of junk. Thelma pried the egg open, which fell into two halves in her hand. Inside one half was some purple gloop. She teased an edge with one finger and worked the putty away and over its plastic shell slowly but surely. Watch this. My bride rolled the putty between her hands, still strong and able as the day we met. That's the day we wed. She made a small snake of it and showed it to her brain. You can even see it morph. You can wrap it around anything and it will keep the glitches out. 100%. I despaired at finding a purple morphable doohickey on your planet, but I perceive my ears can now relax. Mercadot stretched his yellow lump and then telescoped it back in. Crickring said, gratitude to you both. What is the price for the doohickey? Thelma smiled. She said, this is a very special purple doohickey. It is not only flexible, but has many extraordinary properties. She demonstrated how one could twist, fold, and chop the putty, and even showed our guests how we could copy images. She stretched the putty all around and then pressed it onto my favorite comic strip from last Sunday's newspaper. We always have newspaper around to wrap the merchandise for transport. Thelma peeled the putty from the paper and triumphantly displayed the blurred image of a yellow and black cartoon tiger. Mercadot rattled off something to Hrickring, and Hrickring responded by rotating 360 degrees while making the whir ting noise I'd heard in the woodlands behind the market. Hrickring then turned to me and said, we shall report that you humans have highly advanced aesthetic sensory apparatus. I was a little confused, but Thelma pushed a white curl off her forehead and said, nice, I will set it aside for you. What else can I show you, gentlemen? We are also in need of a transparent thin gummy, preferably with retractable whatzises. Our own works with a nanogravity, but to reach escape velocity from your planet, we need one of thicker skin. A transparent thin gummy. Hmm. Thelma mused. I walked over to the right most of our three tables and considered the choices before me. Transparent, yes. I wasn't sure about the retractable whatzes. About this, I asked, handing Hrickring a graceful hourglass-shaped milk bottle. It sported the outline of a contented orange cow with the words Happy Acres Dairy in an arc below her. One of his manipulating extremities grasped the waist of the milk bottle and brought it up to one of his four eyes with the base of the bottle closest to his bluish lump. More jibber-jabber between the customers. I didn't understand a word, so I just waited and thought about suggesting to Thelma to get some Chinese food for dinner. He jabbered some more. I swear, it could even make an easygoing guy like me vote to make English the official language. Thelma yawned and then said, so will it work? Mercadot said, the skin is thick and contains space, time, and perfect proportion. I believe it will give us the retro boost required, but Herkring says we must have retractable whatzises. I rubbed my chin. It was getting late, and most of the vendors had packed up and gone home already. But with a little bit of luck, I'd be able to find some whatzises of the retracting variety. I asked them to wait and circled around our tables and strode up aisle G. The first cross lane, I turned left and continued about a hundred feet. Yep. Danny was still there, but packing up. He had 
Jack's in his ears under the dreadlocks and was bopping around to some music. So I had to raise my voice a bit to get his attention. Grandpa, he was a good kid despite, despite his smart mouth and worked at the flea market free weekend selling office supplies to raise money for his graduate pro program in astrophysics. Hey, Danny, I want to buy some ball points. He sold me a package of a dozen with black ink. Then I turned back and bought another dozen with blue ink, which I hoped was enough. I headed back to Thelma and our two customers. Thelma was laughing when I got there. What's the joke, I asked. Mercadot was telling me about the last time he laid an egg and the convolutions he went through to get it fertilized. I sometimes wonder how I've spent 40 years with that woman. Everybody knows males don't lay eggs. See what I mean? Even strangers gossip with Thelma. I shook my head and returned to business at hand. Behold, retractable what's -is -is, I declaimed and clicked a bit a few times. Spring asked if he could examine our high-tech high retractable solution to his intractable problem. He clicked and clicked some more. Then he dropped seven or eight of the ballpoint pens into the milk bottle thing gummy. He held the bottle up to his eyes and appeared to squint through its transparent skin at the Wetzes's. Mercadot took the remaining pens and said, these will provide mutual coherence. Their special variation will allow, will allow us to fine tune the moment of phase shift. We will have to retrofit them to the thing gummy. Thelma set the Wetzes's aside too. The last piece of apparatus we need is a thermal gym cracking. It must be rather large, but storable in a full, small four-dimensional space. Perkring must be able to deploy it using a single, single extremity, and its insulating qualities must be uniform and consistent and at least 75 on the Krapulian scale. Its color and aroma are unimportant compared with the metri metrical specifications. Someone got that look in her eye, which told me she was up to something. She said... I believe we have the highest quality of the thermal gym cracky in the galaxy right over here. She pulled a quilt out from the bottom of her layered coverlet display. She continued, you see, we have many gym crackies, but this one is the one for you. It will keep your eggs and what's as snug as a bug in a rug. It can be folded and unfolded with just one hand or any extremity you like if you lay it down on any two-dimensional surface and when fully deployed it will cover a california king-size bed for both of you and though you are too concerned about the other features to specify the color you can see it has a lovely moire pattern which will bring joy to your vehicle and better yet the contrast contrasting trim makes it even more valuable brick ring and mercadot agreed that our thermal gym cracker would do the job about as well as anything else they were likely to find on this planet. So the next step was to negotiate the price for all the widgets. Kadot suggested that we might be amenable to giving them a discount since they were doing so much business with us. Thelma pointed out that we had kept the store open well past our normal business hours just for them. Crickring reminded us that when he and Mercadot would have to retrofit the Wutzeses and that the delicate operation would take four to the sixth power lillipans, a unit of measure used for linear time that he could not, most unfortunately, convert for us into human terms. But time is money, they said, and we had to allow that this was often true. I said it was only fair that a middleman be allowed to make a few percentage points for the knowledge that brings two parties together and that the retractable Wutzeses cost me a pretty penny. Seeing their hesitation and wanting to press my advantage, I reminded them that we had provided them with one-stop shopping only a short distance from their crippled vehicle, and I closed the sale by casually lifting up the purple putty and deforming it so the tiger grew before their very eyes. Mercadot closed all four of his eyes, and maybe her eyes, I was still sure males don't lay eggs, but Thelma had done so well thus far that I didn't want to intrude, word a bit, and then opened them. He sat down on the ground, his yellow legs arrayed around him. Reaching into a pocket in the left rear boot, he withdrew some green rocks the size of ping pong balls and a small gizmo, or maybe it was a gadget or a flap doodle, hard to say. 
He pressed the rocks up to Thelma and the device to me. I believe these will be equitable payment. The green rocks are beryllium alumino silicate and the electronic unit will, will allow you to bypass all involuntary governmental revenue enhancement petitions. I looked at my lady love. Her white hair was coming loose from her bun, her apple cheeks blossoming into a smile. The moiré pattern thermal gym cracking was a water-stained moving company blank quilt we used to protect Thelma's handiwork between our house and the flea market, and the electronic gadgets seemed like just the thing if that all guy in aisle C did turn out to be with the IRS. It's a deal. We waved farewell and bon voyage. So want to get some Chinese takeout for dinner? That's the end. Thank you. Thank you so much, Andrea. That was a really cute story. And thank you, Melody, for writing it. If you would like to read more of stories like this or listen to them, please visit us at metastellar.com. And links below. Thank you so much for joining us. Bye. Bye.